This is your Friday check-in. It is Friday, December 1st. On Wednesday when I posted the lecture, um, I actually went to my local coffee shop and found that they now have a small zine library with zines for sale, um, a couple of free ones, um, and things that you can look at and, um, and pose there. So it's, um, it's Europa on Pennsylvania and Baker, if anyone knows it. And I picked up um, the newest copy of one of my favorite zines, um, Short and Queer, which um, is uh, by Kelly Short and Queer, local Denver zinester. Um, who also does a lot of work with the zine library and this is an interview um, with Grandpa Sabin. I just got I just got started with it so I haven't had a chance to get very far but it is really fun to see um, real life local ways that um, that oppressed people are seeking to speak for themselves outside of the way that they're represented in corporate media. Um, and I think that's one of the um, one of the um, really exciting things about this um, about the very small press, especially for right now. Um, and in comparison to the media reports that you all completed for the midterms, um, now I am having um, trouble reading my own handwriting. I think. Um, Oh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is um, is to contrast the way that oppressed people can speak for themselves to the way that they might be might, that they might be represented, um, and the way that um, that other people might um, might speak might seek to showcase them or represent them. So think about the difference in the ways that women, um, transgender folks and queer people have been represented um, by others and the way that they represent themselves. Um, this is a central question that stretches across a lot of the reading that we're doing for this week because um, I think it also applies to um, the case of female genital cutting, which um, which is a case, which is an issue that is um, is a very important issue, but is taken up by Western feminists um, in ways that third world women themselves often don't recognize and often um, don't identify with. Um, so we do want to think a little bit about, you know, what it means to take up someone else's cause, what it means to represent someone else's issues as your own, what it means to represent their experiences as a basis for politics. And that applies also to African-American midwives in the South in the reading that we did um, by Craven and Glatzfell, right? They were talking about the ways that African-American midwives' um, experiences were really misrepresented when taken up by, um, by the larger um, movement for midwifery that tends to be dominated by white middle-class women. And so a lot of the questions that I've asked you to think about are um, are things that bridge between the um, the readings for today and also um, I'm trying to get you into this practice of um, thinking about what is useful for your project, what is useful, what the connections are between the readings that we're doing that are required and um, this project that really interests you. And I think this issue of um, using other people's experiences or bringing together the collective experiences of women as a basis for activism is a theme that runs um, pretty deep throughout all of our readings, really. Um, but, you know, in sexual harassment, it really is um, closely related also um, because that was one of those things that started in um, the 1970s consciousness raising groups um, that um, as we that that is what started us all off on this journey of um, wanting to do this project um, so before the 70s um, there really was there was no word for sexual harassment there was no um, it was just, the way that it was um, when you were hired as a woman into a corporation, women's roles in corporations really mimicked their gender roles in um, everything else. And so 
Kate McKinnon, I mean, sorry, not Kate McKinnon, Catherine McKinnon, um, who is a scholar, not Kate McKinnon, who's on SNL. Um, Catherine McKinnon wrote that when women are hired, they're hired as women. And, um, and that um, in some ways their sex role and the, um, their gender role is, um, and the sexuality that comes with that is part of what the male corporation is buying. Um, and so we need to look at the practices that have always gone on um, and start to develop new names for them and new ways to resist them. And the first name for that was sexual harassment. Um, there's another book that I recommend that is called Sexual Shakedown by Lynn Fairley, and that comes out of the first consciousness raising sessions at Cornell in the 1970s um, when this problem was first um, named, not first identified, um, but first really theoretically named. Um, there have been a couple of questions about um, logistics. So the final is due December 12th. Um, a couple of people didn't see, and I, I do apologize, it's not on the assignment sheet, but it is in the syllabus under grading components. Um, your final write-up will be due December 12th. I have um, a rubric for you all that I will share um, if I haven't already, I have to double check, um, that is on how to ace experimenting with activism. It takes you through point by point a great structure for this, um, and it should be very helpful for you in getting started um, with the drafting process, I mean. Now, <clears throat> the other thing um, that I wanted to announce is um, I'm actually excited because I had reserved this last this last this next coming week the last week of us together as a sort of to be announced um, reading week and um, I have a lot of reading to offer you on sexual harassment and I think that the best use of this class um, this space for you all professionally personally um, and for just what it means to be a woman in social action right now in this couple of months is for us to start to is for us to just make a specialty week out of sexual harassment and look at some of the readings so i am going to um to uh, to assign a couple of readings to help you all get more familiar give you some of the classics um for sure i will just i will assign some portion of Catherine mckinnon's work I will also probably assign something by Carrie Baker, who is a more recent person working on sexual harassment, who also is, writes for Ms. Magazine. Um, it's also, um, you know, I, I talked a little bit in a previous check-in um, about how it was, about how we need to look back in our history. And I mentioned Bill Clinton, but um, the other thing that I think we really all need to be studying again and learning our history on is the Anita Hill trial. Anita Hill was a lawyer for the EEOC, who, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which is the federal office that is in charge of prosecuting employment discrimination. And she worked for Clarence Thomas and was sexually harassed by him during, the, during her period working there. This all came out during, the confirm, during his Supreme Court confirmation hearing, and he was confirmed anyway. And so um, I'd like us to to study in depth that incident a little bit more, um, because I think it, it shows the longer history of what is happening now, where all of a sudden it, it feels as though, um, you know, every, every other man in power um, is suddenly sexually harassing women, but if we go back and study the Clinton, the Clinton allegations, if we go back and study the um, the Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas hearings, um, we can see that there's actually been a long history of women being silenced when it comes to um, abuse from from men in power, and um, and it's interesting. It'll be interesting for us to think about that as a historical context for what's happening now in the present, um, because Clarence Thomas is still a Supreme Court justice. Um, so look for that. 
um, it's, it's going to be a really exciting week. I hope, um, I hope that you all bring your absolute, um, best and most interesting, especially because this is a topic that in some ways you have selected. Um, and, um, I hope that I can pick some things that will be really informative and challenge you to think in more depth on this issue. Um, I feel like I haven't said quite enough about women representing themselves. Um, but like I said, think about, as you think through that issue, think about what the ties are um, to, to your activist project. Think about the ways that, what assumptions are you making about other women's experiences? What assumptions are you making about your experiences maybe being the same as all other women's when um, we know that women's experiences do vary based on race, based on gender identity. Um, maybe think about the ways in which your project um, is or is not inclusive of women of different sexualities and gender orientations. Are you thinking about the sexual harassment or, um, or violence faced by trans women? Um, or um, non-gender, non-binary people? Are you thinking um, about the way that um, lesbianism is perhaps also um, disciplined within, um, disciplined by sexual violence um, and sexual aggression from men? So um, think about all those issues. Um, think about what a, di a diverse group of women who may not look like you, may not have all the same experiences as you, um, how they might think about this issue. Um, think also about the class limitations of this focus on sexual harassment, right? Um, and that is what the article that I've written on sexual harassment is about. Um, we talk a lot about um, women in professional roles but we really don't have enough focus on women working in the service industry, which is the vast majority of women in our country. So um, I hope you enjoy talking about all these issues um, that will all be posted for you. And please let me know if you have any questions or concerns at all, post in the, co in the coffee shop anonymously if there's anything that, um, that uh, you feel uncertain about, um, feel free to email me. I want to make sure we all finish the semester as strong as possible, and um, I look forward to seeing what you all come up with.